Now, let's try to understand and discuss this uh, concept of backtesting the value at risk. First of all, we need to, uh, uh, we can very well appreciate the fact that whenever we bring in the value at risk, we are talking about, uh, we need to really elaborate how it has been calculated, what data did I take for calculation of it, did I go with uh, the p &L data, did I go with uh, arithmetic returns, did I go with geometric returns, how did I really uh, compute it and how can I really link it with the actual performance, right? If I am not able to, if I am not able uh, to uh, predict the future risk properly, right, if the future risk is not getting predicted uh, properly, what is the need of this VAR model? So, which means any model that we are bringing in, there needs to be a sufficient validation that has to be done for it. Checking the accuracy or adequacy of the model. To what extent the model is really fitting the requirement. Right? So, that is very much essential. Any model we are building for whatever purpose. Now, what we say is there are various mechanisms which are helping us to do that model validation part. And one of such kind of... Uh, tools which helps us in testing the adequacy of the model is backtesting. Apart from that, we can also have a few models which are uh, like something like stress testing or probably I can talk about the independent review of the work product, uh, independent review of the model, doing a kind of oversight on it, providing the adequacy of the model or fitment of the model to the requirement. So, here let me uh, talk about uh, the back testing, which is one of the core, uh, one of the core uh, processes which can really do the validation of the model. This is purely a statistical framework, right? Back testing is a pure statistical framework, wherein I am trying to verify the actual losses against the projected losses. So, my VAR model will give me some kind of projected losses. Okay, it says there is a 5% chance that the losses, the daily losses will exceed some X. That is what it says, 95% confidence interval VAR for a daily uh, returns is some X, which means there is a 5% chance that the losses could be more than that. Now, what I would like to see is compare the actual losses. Okay, in every 100 days, typically uh, 5 days, the losses could be more than X. And that is what I want to compare. So, I will verify the actual losses, whether they are in line with the projected. Right? So, we are simply looking at comparing the history, the historical VAR forecasts that are there whatever the VAR forecasts that have come up historically, I am looking at the actual returns that have come up and finally seeing in how many cases there is, uh, uh, there is uh, exceeding the uh, VAR forecast, whereas uh, what is the VAR forecast talking of, how many days it should exceed. So, it is primarily uh, doing some kind of uh, a reality check on the computed VAR. So, just to make sure whether my model is well designed or not, probably this kind of mechanism is very much required because if my model is faulty, I can really look at it whether, they, whether the assumptions that I have taken into the model have some problems or the parameters that I have chosen for the model do they have some kind of uh, issues? Are they calculated? Uh, are they estimated incorrectly? The modeling formulas itself, did I do them uh, 
Did I do them the modeling process and the modeling calculation? Did I do them uh, any kind of uh, problematic? Such kind of re-examination re can very well be done, which can result in improving the model consistently. So even backtesting can help me in terms of the model improvement also. And even more, probably if you look at the Basel, which is a regulation for the banking industry, which is a standard for the banking industry, they have said that the banks can use actually the internally built models for computing the value at risk. Now, think of this bold step which has been taken by Basel. They can use their own internal model. Now, there is a very strong possibility that the banks are going to understate the risk. Now, this is where again backtesting is coming into picture. Just because of the backtesting as a concept, the Basel had that confidence in allowing the banks to use their internal models for capital requirement. So they have brought in some rules with respect to backtesting, which will specify the number of exceptions that can come in the model. So, uh, and based on that, they are even putting a penalty in terms of the VAR that needs to be a set, the, the capital that needs to be a set based on the VAR requirement. So, which means the backtesting had played a very important role in the for the banks to really uh, take a decision regarding allowing the banks to use their own internal model. Because the intention is any backtesting that we are doing, it should really identify who have willingly understated the risk. But at the same time, it should be able to uh, distinguish those under those uh, wars that have uh, uh, those wars that have uh, exceeded purely because of bad luck. Those returns which have exceeded the war purely because of bad luck. So there should be some kind of mechanism which will distinguish these two. So if I say 5% of the observations can exceed the VAR, which means 5 out of 100. Should it penalize per 6? Should it penalize per 7? Now, this is where, because 6 and 7 could be purely because of bad luck. But if the same number goes to 20, then probably there is a problem with the model. Now, this is where we talk about on what basis I should look out for this kind of a distinction. So the backtesting model needs to address this kind of problem as well. Then, any backtesting model should really be helpful in terms of comparing. It should facilitate the comparison process of the actuals with respect to the predicted model. And uh, we know that uh, a VAR itself is based on a kind of confidence level means it itself says some percentage of the observations will lie outside the VAR, right? So, whatever are the actual values which are the actual uh, losses which are exceeding the VAR, we are calling them as exceptions. So, if there are too many exceptions, probably you have understated, underestimated your risk. Means the number of uh, times the exceptions, if the, if the losses are much, much greater than uh, uh, the, the, the required, we are looking at too many exceptions, the model is underestimating the risk, which means I am allocating too little capital, right, because I have underestimated Allocated capital also going much, much lesser. But on the other side, if my losses are, uh, if my losses are too, if the exceptions are very, very low in number, even we are looking at inefficient allocation of the capital. I did not allocate the capital properly. Now, this is what we really uh, look at on a regular uh, basis, right? We should uh, see that uh, we can very well do a plot between whatever uh, has been the predicted, 
the number on a daily basis i can look at it like the predicted uh, number of exceptions and i can uh, bring in the actual number of exceptions so probably over a 45 degree line anything that is above they are really called as exception because the actual number of deviations above the predicted are much much higher now at least uh, for a few it is allowed but anything let's say probably if i am setting 2% of the observation so anything if this number is falling into 2% of the observation the model is very well calibrated but if the number of exceptions are much more than that there is some kind of a problem with the model now here comes one interesting uh, point to be discussed okay we talk about the returns so the actual returns right to what extent are actual losses to what extent they have exceeded your var now here comes the value at risk as a definition itself we remember that it is it is assuming that your current portfolio is frozen over the entire horizon but in reality the trading happens intraday quite often which means the actual return is completely different uh, which will keep changing by buying and selling of the securities whereas var assumes that the portfolio is frozen over the time period so any intraday but the actual return actually uh, contains all the intraday trades profit items fees commission spreads all these things are included as a part of the actual return so which mean there is a difference so if i am using the actual returns for computing the var i cannot use it right the computation of the var i will not use the actual returns i will try to go with the hypothetical returns only for the computation of the value at risk i am com i am coming out with the hypothetical uh, returns where i am assuming the fixed positions of the portfolios right so even while i am doing the comparison i have to uh, do it with respect to the var that has computed the the var that has been computed against that i will measure the hypothetical returns not the actual returns but yeah if i am looking at the uh, the back testing for very small time periods probably a daily kind of stuff very rare that the portfolio balance can be changed that drastically but still intraday kind of a trading can very well uh, contaminate the portfolio too much now that's the reason we are talking about we will generate a kind of a hypothetical return that very closely comes out to the var forecasted uh, uh, combination that we have come out with so it's a frozen portfolio where i am bringing the fixed positions that i am multiplying with the actual returns and those returns are being really uh, taken uh, as the basis for the back testing mechanism so that is one thing we have to understand we will use the hypothetical returns for the comparison purpose we will not use the actual returns or in some cases there is even a mechanism called cleaned returns when i am using the word cleaned returns it is nothing but actual return minus all the non mark to market items right non mark to market items like your uh, fees commissions whichever are not mark to market on a regular basis i have delete all of them or any kind of net interest income they are uh, excluded and the return that comes out is the cleaned return now what we say is for comparison purpose either this or this can very well be used so finally we are using some of this let's say if i am using the hypothetical return and comparing with the var 
So whatever are the deviations, I am understanding the deviations and actually are coming out with the correction mechanism. But if I am doing it with the actual returns and computing the deviations also, actual returns can be helpful for some other purpose. Actual returns will talk about the real P&L, how well the company is performing, what is the typical volatility that has been included with respect to the return. All these things should come with the actual returns, not the uh, hypothetical returns. So, which means it's better to do the exception comparison both with the hypothetical returns as well as the actual returns. Because in some cases, if the model is good with the hypothetical return, but it is not good with uh, the actual returns, which means I can say there is some problem with the intraday trading. Right, And in some cases, let's say with the actual returns, the model has gone good. Model calibration was good, but with the hypothetical returns, it is not good, which means my model creation itself is having some kind of problem. So in some cases, by doing a comparison both with the actual returns as well as the hypothetical returns, we can even bring out some useful conclusions. But at the end, what we are trying to understand uh, here is backtesting is a very powerful tool which helps us to really uh, compare uh, the actual, uh, compare the returns, uh, compare the profits and losses against uh, what has been uh, computed for VAR, see the number of exceptions and then based on that, uh, take your capital uh, requirements accordingly. Right, so one of the most powerful processes uh, in risk management becomes uh, goes with the back testing. All right.